Have you ever felt like your world was built on shifting sand? A sudden job loss, a financial crisis, or a relationship breakdown can leave you feeling shaken to the core. It's that nagging instability. It's a sign that maybe we've prioritized the wrong things. Here's a few notes we received over the last few weeks. My hand shook as I opened that letter. Job terminated. Four words that turned my world upside down. The fancy car. The spacious house. Suddenly it all felt like a flimsy facade. Panic squeezed my chest as I realized the foundation I'd built wasn't nearly as strong as I thought. Have you ever felt that crushing sense of everything you worked for just disappeared? I was at the peak of my career, raking in the cash. Designer suits, exotic vacations, my bank account bulging. And I never felt more restless. One night, gazing out at the glittering city skyline, a chilling question struck me. If all this was swept away tomorrow, what would truly remain? That's when I knew something was deeply wrong with the way I measured success. Seeing my daughter's tear-streaked face, clutching that unpaid bill, that's the moment it hit me. I might have been fooling the world with my outward success, but behind closed doors, debt was crushing my family. The weight of my choices became unbearable. I know I'd been chasing sand for a long time. I was the good church lady, always smiling, always contributing, but inside I battled a secret shame. My finances were a disaster. One Sunday during a sermon about building our lives on Christ, something inside me snapped. I realized my carefully crafted image was a flimsy house of cards. That day I decided enough was enough. Today on the Ask Ralph Podcast, we're talking about how to build unshakable lives based on a foundation that outlasts any storm. It's about finding the true source of security and how that translates to wise financial choices. Welcome to the Ask Ralph Podcast. We're listening to an experienced financial professional with over 30 years of experience can help you make sense of confusing questions, current headlines, and industry trends about taxes, small business, financial decision-making, investment strategies, and even the art of proper budgeting. Ask Ralph makes the complex simple by sharing his real-world knowledge from a Christian perspective with all things financial. Now here's your host, Ralph Eastep Jr., Let's get started by reading the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. I love how the Bible uses such vivid imagery. The wise and foolish builders, those contrasting houses. Envision it. A sprawling modern mansion on a sandy shore versus a simple cabin built into the bedrock. When the storms came, only one survives. Now that beach mansion could represent a life built on outward appearances. We're accumulating stuff. Hey, we're all guilty of that. The rock-built cabin symbolizes something else entirely. A life grounded in God's eternal truth. Let's be honest. Building on sand doesn't always look so obvious. Could be maxing out our credit cards on the latest trends while ignoring growing debt. It could be pouring out every ounce of energy into climbing the corporate ladder only to find yourself spiritually and emotionally bankrupt. Or maybe it's feeling an obsessive need to control your finances. Forgetting the true security only comes from God. These aren't sinful things, but they're shifting sands. When life's storms hit, the wise builder, the one who hears Jesus' words and puts them into action, they recognize that fleeting success or material possessions offer a false sense of stability. Hey, I can speak for myself. I've chased after those things, and at the end you find you're just empty. Instead, they focus on building a life rooted in something far stronger, an unwavering relationship with God, and it's all about the relationship, guided by wisdom of Scripture. Listen, that doesn't mean Christians can't be wealthy or that there's no joy in a comfortable life. I am sick and tired of hearing about people say, well, you goody-two-shoe Christians, you don't live life, you aren't having any fun, you don't have any happiness. That's nonsense. But, and this is the key. How do we build that rock-solid foundation, especially when it comes to our finances? Well, today I'm going to get practical, folks. I'm going to give you some biblical wisdom 
and give you some action steps of how to do it. Let's start with the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 20. It says, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. Listen, a budget isn't just about numbers. It's about aligning our spending with God's priorities, generosity, smart saving, and avoiding the trap of wasteful spending. That's what it comes down to. If you have a smart budget, it's biblical. Like it says here in Proverbs, in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. Are you devouring all you have? Let's talk about conquering debt because it entangles us. It limits our ability to give back and build for the future. Let's look at Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Reminds us this. Let no debt remain outstanding except a continuing debt to love one another. Well, what does that mean, Ralph? It means focusing on paying it off aggressively. Strategizing, whether that's the snowball or avalanche method. I've talked about that in other podcasts. Combined with a fierce resolve to change your spending habits. This is the key, folks. You've got to conquer that debt. Don't have your financial life built on sand. Build it on bedrock. Conquer that debt. What goes along with that is a healthy emergency fund. It offers peace. More valuable than any luxury purchase. Listen, if you have financial stability and financial security, that is going to mean more peace than any luxury item you'll ever buy. Imagine the confidence of knowing you can weather unexpected expenses. Aim for at least three to six months living costs tucked away to shield you from sinking into debt. When life throws a curveball, and listen, folks, we all have curveballs. I remember when my wife and I were just married not too long, and we had two young kids. And all of a sudden, we had a washing machine that needed to be repaired. And we didn't have that emergency savings, so we had to put that money on a credit card. And it took us a while to get that paid off. If we had built that emergency fund, we wouldn't have had to suffer like that. Another part of this is investing wisely. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11 says, Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Well, how do you do that, Ralph? Whether it's retirement savings or other investments, research carefully, seek godly counsel, and favor a long-term perspective. This is not going to happen overnight. But as it says, But whoever gains money little by little makes it grow. Do it little by little and watch it grow. And another part of this is embracing contentment. We're all guilty of this. If you look on social media, everybody's chasing after everybody else. I got to have what this one has. I got I'm guilty of that too. This endless pursuit of more is a trap that leads to spiritual emptiness. Listen, when you get it all, and I've been there, I've had it all. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant or brag, but I've been there. And you're just more empty then. And I finally realized that you know, money doesn't fill my tank anymore. It's that connection with God. It's that relationship with Jesus that does it. So how do you do that? Well, you focus on gratitude for what you do have and invest in experience and mostly invest in relationships with others. That's what brings real and lasting joy. Junk doesn't bring joy. Maybe I should catchphrase that. That sounded really good, but it doesn't. Stuff isn't going to make you happy. Yes, it can make you comfortable. But it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't bring you great joy. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 12 to 13, teaches us, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That's the answer to the question, isn't it? having gratitude and knowing that I can do all this through him who gives me strength. The truth is, folks, true financial resilience isn't achieved by technical skills alone. I could give you all kinds of great things to do. Do a budget, measure your spending, invest in this, invest in that. But that's not the total answer. That's part of it. But it's when we daily choose to surrender everything, our worries, our dreams, our financial situation. We surrender it to God. That's where we find unshakable stability. It's only in that rock-solid faith that we'll truly find stability. Please allow me to offer a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your eternal wisdom. Forgive us for building our lives on shifting sands, chasing possession, status, and control. 
Help us to become people who prioritize your word, who manage money with a heart bent on generosity and kingdom impact. Strengthen us to resist temptation, to overcome debt, to save wisely, and to cultivate true contentment. Give us the grace to build our lives on the firm foundation of your unchanging love. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, even the wisest builder couldn't withstand a hurricane without the right foundation. The same is true for our lives. Before we wrap up, I want to remind all of our listeners to visit our podcast page. That's at askgraphpodcast.com. There you can leave us a review, share your thoughts, or even send us a message with questions for future episodes. Share something that has helped you build that strong foundation. While you're there, join our email list so we can let you know about things going on with the program. And for right now, we're offering a $25 Amazon gift card giveaway. Every week, we're going to pick somebody and they're going to win that card. Remember this, start building your finances on the only foundation that lasts, Jesus Christ. Friends, stay financially savvy and God bless you abundantly. Thank you for joining us on the Ask Ralph podcast. And with the simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. And remember, financial issues don't have to be complicated. Just Ask Ralph. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Saggio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.